the return of an old series that I have been reading, but then the library didn't have it, my friend didn't have it, so I couldn't read it. But now, it's right over here, and hello fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I am reviewing you guys this epic awesome book, City of Heavenly Fire, The Mortal Instruments Finale, Book 6, by Cassandra Clare herself, and well, let's get right on to it. So, now, let's start with our main characters. Our main characters are Clary Frey and Jace Harrendale. Now, they are a couple, and the romance gets pretty disgusting and pretty, like, PG-17 PG or something, but still, it is a great, great fantasy, so I tolerate it. And basically, Jace and Clary, well, from the last book, they are devastated. Sebastian Morgenstern. Clary's sister is very, very much evil, and she wants to wipe out all Nephilim, shadow hunters, from the world. And he has been pillaging institutes, grabbing shadow hunters and turning them into his soldiers, the Indarkened, whom which are powers, who which are pretty much dead shells of shadow hunters, which talks and is powered by the Infernal Cup. And then, of course, several institutes are attacked, and all of the Shadow Hunters are pulled back into Alicante, the capital of, well, the Shadow Hunter realm. And there they they harbor within the Glass City. But it is not safe, because who in this world would protect the world against the evil downworlders and demons if not the Shadow, shadow Hunters do it? And so they need to go out and they need to break this impasse with Sebastian. And they need, they must defeat Sebastian. But it isn't really that simple. And meanwhile, Simon and a couple other people, Simon, Jordan, and Maya, as in Jordan and the Praetor Lupus Cup, who is, is like a werewolf guardian guy. And he and Simon, they're staying together, and he's officially protecting Simon. Of course, something is about to happen to them, but we'll get on to that one later. Then, Clary says that she wants a proper weapon, and she is given Hesphoros or something, the Dawnbringer. Apparently, hundreds of years ago, generations ago, the Morgensterns were a proud and great family. And it was, and two blades were meant for father and son. One much longer blade, long, bigger blade that was used by the father, who in turn is now used by Sebastian. And the shorter, smaller blade called the Dawnbringer, Hellsporus, the that blade was meant for the son, and that is the blade that Clary picked up and claimed as her own. And as she does that. The Adamant Citadel, where the Iron Sisters work the iron and make weapons for the Shadow Hunters, is besieged. And Shadow and the Shadow Hunters all pile up and they go after the Endarkened. But these Shadow Hunters, they think that the Endarkened can be brought back. They don't understand what happens to someone when they drink from the Infernal Cup. They can't accept that their rel relatives or their lovers or their wives or Anyone could be turned into something so vile and evil. But it is true, it is what's going on. And if this continues on, the battle for the Advantance Adamant Citadel will be lost, and many, many Shadow Hunters will lose their lives. If not for Jace Harrendale. He leads the battle, knowing that these in Darken had no mercy and had no relocation of their families, they were simply controlled by the Infernal Cup. They didn't even count as human. And Jace went on and he plowed through the enemies and then finally he fed, fed, met face to face with Sebastian Morgenstern. And the two clash, but Jace Herondale loses. But, alas, when Sebastian slashes his sword and he opens a wound on Jace, Jace's side, the, uh, the attack rebounds on him. And Heavenly Fire seeps out of Jay's and then hits Sebastian back. And that basically means that, well, first off, 
Sebastian is really, really surprised. And second off, he isn't invulnerable to anything. He can be hurt by Jace Herondale. There is still hope. And finally, Sebastian calls a retreat. But Sebastian seems to have a very mysterious ally, and we would very much like to know who that is. Meanwhile, at Alicante, we are strengthening the Accords and strengthening the alliance between the werewolves, the werewolves, the vampires, the fairies, and of course, the shadow hunters, the Nephilim. And together, they are about to stand against, well, obviously, Sebastian's army of Endarkened. But the representatives are kidnapped by Sebastian's forces, and we have found we find out that the fairies have been treacherous for all this time. They had teamed up with Sebastian, and they were going to destroy the Nephilim. Which is honestly not good at all. And basically, this is not good because without the downworlders on their side, Nephilim are pretty few, especially in a full-out war. So, in a war like this, they really needed their allies, and their allies were taken away from them. And back to Jace and his injury, we find out that when when Jace got cut and the Heavenly Fire sweeped out and hit pro brother Zachariah, a silent brother, he has been healed and he has been reverse pro reversed the process of becoming a silent brother, and he's once again the man he was before. And if some of you guys read the Infernal Devices, we know exactly who that is. But of course, you will have to read that series to know that particular backstory. And then, of course, things get bad, bad, bad. Simon, uh, Simon is tagged, and the Praetor Lupus headquarters is burned down. And Jordan is killed, Maya becomes the leader of the wolf of the wolf werewolves, and things aren't looking the best. And then we finally figure out where Sebastian is hiding out and why the Shadow Hunters can't seem to be able to track him. He is in Edom, one of the demon dimensions that you can go through using fairy lands. And this is where everyone finds out oop. Well, oh my gosh, the fairies. Of course it's the fairies. Fairies are so treacherous. And they're just so skilled in the art of betrayal. And and then this and then they finally go through and catches the queen by surprise and manage to get into the demon realm, in which no shadow hunter or human has ever come back alive. It is like a parallel universe, a parallel universe where Jonathan Shadow Hunter was a divider, not a uniter. A world where the shadow hunters had failed and the world had ended. And it is not necessarily a very nice world, but there they knew they needed to rescue the representatives and possibly kill Sebastian Morgenstern. And they go through the demon lands adventuring Isabel, Alec, Jace, and of course Simon, and of course Clary. And together they adventure through the um, the demon dimension, and then they find a couple useful things along the way, and finally they confront Sebastian. But Sebastian, in his own realm, is nearly immortal. He's invincible, and it is impossible to kill him with a power with power under heaven itself. And he forces Clary to become his queen to rule this empty, empty world. To rule hell forever at his side. But alas, it was all a ruse. Because Clary had put a rune, a rune that kept appearing in her head, on her sword. And because of that newly changed rune, her sword is now the first ever shadow hunter weapon to wield heavenly fire. And heavenly fire, the only thing that can hurt Sebastian Morgenstern. And so Clary gives gives our dear Well Sebastian the Judas kiss. You know, in the Bible where Judas kisses Jesus and um the guards know who to arrest. And she does the same thing, except she kisses Sebastian on the cheek 
and she makes a bright arc and stabs him with her blade. And she lights up like a seraphim braid, and the fire, the heavenly fire, burns out all was bad that was within Sebastian. And we meet what he could have been without the demon blood within him. Jonathan Morgenstern. A good man, but a ghost of something of what might have been, but could never have been, was the demon blood. And finally, Jonathan dies, and we need to get out of this dimension, but there isn't really a way out now, because Sebastian sealed it all off. Thanks a lot, Sebastian. But, you see, Magnus, Magnus Bane, Alex's boyfriend, he, his father, owns this part of hell. And he calls as far as Asmodeus, who is one of the princes of hell, and he gives them a bargain. If one of them gives up their immortal life, they will walk through, they can go through into their world. And at first, Magnus Bane tries to sacrifice his own immortality, but no. Simon goes along and sacrifices his vampireness and his daylighter blood to the demon. But the demon always has a trick. He says that Simon, all of Simon's memory of the shadow world, of Clary, of the fighting, of all the adventures they had gone through together, the experiences that made the Simon now, the Simon now, will be wiped out. And he wouldn't even remember his girlfriend, Isabel, who was in love with Simon very, very much. And so, but sadly, that wasn't much of a choice, and Simon sacrifices all these things, and they are, they go back into the world of the Shadowhunters, well, our world. And there finally, we get a bittersweet ending. Simon might never remember what completely happened with the Shadow Hunters, but he will be trained as a new Shadow Hunter and he's recruited to become a Nephilim. And Jace and Clary are still together, and Luke, Luke and um, Joyce and Clary's mom, they are having a mar- marriage and it's all good. And it is all good, and the book ends with, I'll quote, Freely, freely one, okay, give me the book. Because what I wrote here is absolute gibberish, so I'll read it from the book. Freely we serve because we freely love, as in our will to love or not, in this we stand or fall. And that is kind of like the motto of Shadowhunters. Because they are, part of them are angels, and they love like angels, and they break like angels if their love is broken. They love so fiercely, and they're not so resilient about love. And they are shadow hunters, Nephilim, the protectors of the realm. And the book ends with Sebastian Morgenstern finally defeated. And Jace recovering his name, Harrendale, instead of Lightwood. And he would lead on the great, great family of Herondales. And Clary Morgenstern will continue the legacy of her family, the great legacy, not Valentine's legacy. And it is it is done. The Shadow Hunter series that I've been reading for so long, The Mortal Instruments, is over. What a fantastic book. I just find it impressive that that Cassandra Clear put together all the stuff from the Bible from the Jewish mythology and all sorts of more urban legends. This is a wonderful, wonderful book. And I really love the Shadowhunter series. I highly enjoy the books. You definitely should read them, but highly inappropriate um, scenes where romance goes to the extreme. So if you're like squeamish with that or you're too young, you probably shouldn't read this. But once you're age, of age, you definitely should. Why? Because it was one of the greatest fantasy books ever. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the Book Quester. Have a great day. Subscribe. Bye.